Today's scripture reading comes from Hebrews 10, 11 through 14, 19 through 25. Won't we listen for God's word speaking to our hearts today? And every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sin. But when Christ had offered for, t- for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. No matter one's walk in life, there are certain things we need in order to have a balanced life. Things like food, water, rest, clothing, medical coverage, etc. You get the idea. We all can say that we need friends and human interaction even. I would like to say as well that there are some who even need a good haircut. I'm not even talking just, you know, sometimes it's only a trim, but we all know a bad hair day. After all, when the hair gets scraggly and split ends take over, the time comes for a shape up, clean up of old debris and out with the old and in with the new growth. And sometimes when the hair gets just a little too out of shape and long, well, we can lose our vision and ability to see without having obstructive view. So, yeah, a cute hairstyle's in, in order. As we think about our hair, or lack thereof, in some cases, we still understand a need for upkeep, the power of unity, some sort of need in this arena of life, whether it's a clean shave or a quick cut. We need to care for our follicles. A place to have this attention performed at helps, and we need to have our needs met and heard and understood. Hence beauty parlors or barber shops with this realization barber shops were born after all according to wikipedia barber shops were born one of the first barber shop organizations was established in france it was in night it was in 1096 the year of After the orders from William, the Archbishop of Rouen, who passed the orders that wearing beards was no longer allowed. So with the need of a barber shop to be easily recognizable so all could be, you know, law-abiding citizens, an icon came, identifying the establishment so whether literate or not, everybody could recognize a barber pole. The pole is universal with its statue and colors. The pole is red, white, blue, diagonal stripes, twisting around a vertical pole. The colors are thereby no accident. You see, the meaning behind the barber pole comes from the Middle Ages and the practices performed in the establishments. It appears haircuts were not the only services rendered by barbers. Back in the day, barbers were able to perform medical services as well. Medical coverage with a haircut. Only I'm not so sure we would want to subscribe to this sort of type of medical coverage in our daily life today. In the Middle Ages, you see, bloodletting was a common procedure when a person suffered from some ailment and they sought to rid themselves of this ailment. 
This archaic procedure was used for such maladies as sore throats to the plagues. It was an attempt to heal the sick by cutting open a vein to allow the tainted blood to flow out, drain out, if you will, thereby allowing a person to be rid of their infection and to have a chance to heal. The colors of the pole, then, are in honor of this medical procedure, red for the blood, white for the bandages, blue for the color of veins. People who are just trying to find healing and wholeness among the world in need of hope and restoration, who knew haircuts had so many secrets throughout the passages of time? It is in our secrets, then, that we find a need for feeling like we belong, that we're worthy and accepted, that we're somehow forgiven, made clean, refreshed, and renewed. It is in this spiritual need of space where we gather together today and throughout of time, yearning for a human feeling, a connection of coming together in a way of life that affords us unity through healing, belonging, and in this space, a barbershop makes sense. You see, barbershops with their iconic poles of recognition correlate to the church and the signs of the cross. More individually, the chalice was St. Andrew's crop for cross for disciples of Christ denomination. The chalice on the sign shows to us the world that we are and who we are and what we are to be expected of our organization. The uniqueness to many disciples churches is found in the individual uniqueness of a barbershop found in Little Rock, Arkansas. You see, just as disciples are a church offering a place of spiritual growth through the path of the cross in Jesus Christ our Lord, the barbershop in Little Rock that I speak of offers haircuts, like all the barbershops, but it gives more than just a perfunctory cut and shave. This particular barbershop is called the Confession Project, and the comp Confession Project of the barbershop is unique to many who have not found a building of red and white St. Andrew's Cross to find for regular attendance and upkeep. The Confession Project is a proper shop whose nonprofit status offers fellowship and creates a space of intentionality for safety to black men for mental health and continuation of self-help meetings for overall improvements and living within the communities that shape their realities. It is a place for mutual accountability for the men to grow and support one another for the uplifting and character development through the spiritual connectedness provoking one another to give and receive love through the good deeds by regular meetings for human contact. The accountability of their support group is much like a church being of people being there for one another for the purpose of extending oneself outside the self-absorbed sense of life being all about me. In this mindset, where one begins to value the discipline of seeing larger than beyond one's nose and valuing the discipline of giving of oneself for the betterment of community, a barbershop is a smart, precise cut made where the clean-shaven faces and necks for the sense of value and rebuilding up of the whole person for the shaping of their hairstyle of a new day for a new outlook, a new lease on life. The only requirement is to show up and keep coming back. Participate. Give of yourself. It is a medical coverage and maintenance for the things that get so neglected that there is no helpful healing means for helpful intervention. The goal is to intercede and help before things get way too far gone before the only earthly death is an option. The goal is to find salvation here among us for a better life of tomorrows. The chalice is being half full for all, not half empty for only a select few. The open table then for all is to each and every one of us to meet us every time we meet. The priesthood of all believers is coming together for the support and accountability that we know that God works in us and through us for the transformation healing work in a process of reshaping our new style and new cut, the meaning of our chalice as disciples. 
So in the letter to the Hebrews, we find encouragement for this line of talk that we have been discussing today. We find our excerpt that we firstly are to encourage people to confess their sins in a space and a place of forgiveness. In our sanctuaries, a new reality, life will happen. In our spiritual health, it is so deepening within all of us. These needs don't go away just because we may not see them tangibly, yet we feel them emotively psychologically and if we don't attend our needs we will die one death or another just like a long neglected haircut the follicles of our soul the inner being of us all will be neglected our style will lose shape and our living will be no more god works within all of us for external images that we seek from inwardly looking out Secondly, in our text today, we address a reminder to one another that practicing good need, deeds is loving one another. Through action, the accountability mutually of one another gives of ourselves, but it goes to the greater whole. Teamwork makes a dream work, is giving little by little, making a larger whole. Helping one another stick to the confession project is what creates a greater sense of giving, like the pennies we talked about last week. Giving makes a bigger difference, no matter how small, in each person's life. Just begin. It's in the accountability of regular check-ins, which promote great shape and form, style, for a new haircut, a new life, a new outlook, each person to maintain on their own, with their own, and one another. So lastly, we find our text that we need to meet together to encourage one another, not by distance or Zoom only, but in person. That's been a hard thing for some of us in a pandemic, but the human connections of hearing, seeing, smelling, touching, connecting, being with one another, listening, making eye contact, smelling, Finding a sense of renewal gives us, from the week-long estrangements of separate living, creates a new whole. Too much absence brings deterioration and destruction of character from the commonwealth of the community which we are to be a part of. A community is not a community without people in it. Those who show up to be a part of the community are the community. The absentees are not really contributing to communities' integrity of structure, shape, and style, unless they can intervene in one point or another. And that can happen, but it takes the availability of one another to form the intentionality of people to, for all to become. After all, the Greek word is used in the passage of Ecclesiastia, the assembly or congregation. The reminder is that we are essential to the life of the church, when we meet together to encourage one another or just by our presence of showing up, our chalice be is always at least half full. So let us picture the barber pole outside of our own church building like that of the Confession Project. Let us see a chalice of trust and forgiveness provoking us to fill our cups with love and giving of our own selves in good deeds as encouragement for others. No bloodletting is required for this type of spiritual medical coverage. In God, universal healing is provided for the transforming work of all who commit to show up and share their styles with God within the body of all. After all, sometimes a better haircut is just what is needed to see better. Amen. So in the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and broke it, and he poured the wine into the cup and said, This is my body given for you. Eat and drink in remembrance of me, proclaiming my death until I come again. All are invited to this table where our cups will, will be half full. As we remember what all of this is about and what it is we're partaking in, let us bow for a word of prayer together. 
Dear Lord, there's so many times in life where we see life as half empty. We ask for you to help us see things, the blessing, the love, the care, the fullness that we do have in life. And in that fullness, may we celebrate you, feast upon that, and share with others as we continue to refill our cups daily. In this refilling of our cups, may your Holy Spirit inspire us and continue to invent and reinvent through us a new life, a new restoration, a new beginning, new grace and mercy and forgiveness. Through that, we pray in the one who has taught us how it is we should pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.